Thank you for joining me for this seventh chakra tune-up. Um, I was just playing uh, the bell for the crown chakra, the seventh chakra. So I wanted to read what it says on the bottom. Um, this is about cosmic energy. And the chakra is located at the soft spot at the top of the head, which becomes harder with age. Um, it also has a connection with the pineal gland. And um, the color is violet to white. Um, it's associated with the amethyst and clear quartz. And it deals with expansiveness, gentleness, calmness, and harmony. And the goal is to experience oneness with the eternal now. So the crown chakra kind of connects us to the oneness of the universe. I had some, some other notes I wanted to read from. Um, so I, I, I subscribe to this app called Insight Timer. There's also a free version of it where they have a lot of meditations, like guided meditations. You can do a, a silent meditation with bells and things like that. And there's also talks and music. Oh, there's all kinds of cool stuff on there. But I was listening to a talk by Arnaud van der Veer about the four-part soul. And I thought what he had to say was really interesting. Uh, he was saying that the first part of the soul is the physical soul, which is like the matter in our cells, the DNA, um, that's, it's like basically chemicals attached to each other through energy, right? And then the second part of our soul is the mental soul, which are the thoughts that you share with others, the, the thoughts that we communicate to, to each other. And, um, and some of those thoughts that we share affect our reality. You know, when you talk to somebody about your ideas, it might change the way they think about things. Or it might cause somebody else to take some sort of action that they wouldn't have taken otherwise. So uh, our, our mental soul also affects reality. And then um, the third part of the soul is our creative soul. So that could be like music, art, painting, what. Uh, cooking, whatever your creativity leads you to do. Um, for some people, like engineers, it's about in, inventing things or uh, creating new ways to do things, new structures. But, um, you know, some of us, we, we uh, put this creativity out into the world and maybe it doesn't get noticed, but then other people are, are famous for their creativity. So they're their creativity creates a legacy uh, that they leave behind, sometimes for centuries, you know, or longer. <laughs> and then um, the fourth part of the soul is where I wanted to tie this in with the seventh chakra. So the fourth part of the soul is about the cosmic wave. That's how uh, Mr. Van der Veer described it. So basically, you know, he he talks about how you know the universe is expanding there's m maybe multiple universes and there's basically just like energy cascading in all different directions through all of these universes and um, so this creates an endless unified energy of the cosmos and um, through our seventh chakra we can become you know, one with that energy, kind of ride with the wave as it comes to us. So I thought that was kind of interesting to think about. Um, so uh, this Sanskrit word for the seventh chakra is Sahasrara. Um, and the, the Bija Mantra, many places say that it's Om. The bottom of my bell says that it's actually hmm. So, uh, I, I think it could probably be both. I think that the hmm sound is more associated with our connection with the entire universe, whereas the om sound is like the sound that started the whole thing. So they're kind of related. Um, and you can look that up somewhere else. I'm not gonna go too deeply into that. But w when the crown chakra is out of balance, we might experience separation or the illusion of separation from others, maybe isolation, loneliness, perhaps like a crisis of faith where we, 
we don't know what we believe or we thought we believed in God and now we're not sure or um, something like that. Um, it can also contribute to cults and group think. So it, if, if your seventh chakra is weak, you might be susceptible to spiritual abuse, basically. So it's always important to um, use your discernment when you're dealing with uh, self-proclaimed gurus and, and things like that. You know, I mean, that's how QAnon has uh, overtaken our uh, YouTube <laughs> tarot reading stations and also uh, infiltrated parts of our government and led to a coup d'etat on January 6th. So these things are dangerous. There's also that Nexium cult where everybody got um, into it. The people who got into it were, were seeking spiritual development, doing these meditations and self-improvement and that kind of thing. So you gotta watch out, you know? I, I want you to keep watching my channel, but I'm, I, uh, I want you to use your discernment in making your own decisions and, and tap into your conscience about what's right. All right, well, I've been doing a lot of preaching on this one. I don't know why I got off on that tangent, but um, let's go ahead and do some asana to help us open up that crown chakra. Um, so with the crown chakra, we do um, the, the family of postures that can help to activate it are inversions. Um, if you are menstruating or if you have any um, heart issues or for any reason are not supposed to have your heart elevated above your head, don't do the inversions, okay? You can modify, you can do Shavasana, which is also a good way to um, get in touch with your crown chakra, maybe even try some yoga nidra. So um, don't overdo it with the inversions. You've got to be careful with that kind of thing. Also with inversions, you want to avoid doing those on the new moon and the full moon because it affects gravity and, and uh, you want to be careful with that. Okay, so let's start with downward facing dog, which is sort of I don't know if everyone considers it to be an inversion, but you kind of get some of the same effects. So we're going to forward fold. Let's walk the hands out. We'll step the feet out. Lifting the hips, pushing the hips, pushing the hips back. You can alternate bending the knees, shifting the hips from side to side. Lifting up onto the toes, drawing the heels towards the mat, feeling space in the spine, the shoulder blades pressed flat against the back of the chest, pressing down towards the earth. And we have chakras in our hands and our feet too, so you can activate those. Inhale, feeling energy rising from the ground up through the heels and the backs of the legs into the sacrum and on the exhale. Will that energy cascade down the spine, through the crown of the head? Inhale, taking the gaze between the hands. Exhale, stepping the feet between the hands, coming into a forward fold. Bending the knees, bringing the abdomen onto the thighs. Inhale, coming halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. On the next inhale, let's come up one vertebra at a time. The chin's tucked into the chest. The head's the last thing to rise. Inhaling, bringing the hands up overhead. And exhale, bringing the hands back to heart center. So let's step the feet out. Maybe about three feet apart, you know, whatever feels right to you. We're all different. Our bodies are all shaped differently. So whatever feels good to you. We'll place the hands on the waist. Inhale, lengthen the spine and check the feet. We want the uh, toes pointing straight forward. 
outside ridges of the feet parallel to each other and a little micro bend in the knees. Inhale, lengthen, and on the exhale, we'll fold forward, hinging from the hips, pressing forward with the chest, coming into a forward fold. Now, if you'd like, you can heel toe the feet out a little bit further. I usually like to at this point. And we're going to walk the hands so that they're in line with the feet, reaching the crown of the head towards the mat. It doesn't have to touch. You might bring a blanket or a, a bolster, I mean a blanket or a block or a book underneath the head. That's an option as well. Engaging the shoulders, bending the knees at a 90 degree angle. You can keep it here. If you'd like, you can work on tripod. So for tripod, you'll bring the shins to the triceps, engaging the core and making sure you're pressing through the shoulders so you're not putting too much pressure on the neck. Engaging the core. You can also bring this into a headstand. I'm a little nervous about that because I have candles and stuff. I don't, I don't want to do a headstand, but you can if it's in your practice. Okay, and then we'll bring it back out. <sighs> Walk the hands so that the wrists are under the shoulders. We'll heel toe the feet closer together. Coming to a forward fold. Then inhale, coming up one vertebra at a time. The chin's touching the chest. The head's the last thing to rise. Inhale, gather up some energy. And exhale. Bringing the hands to heart center. Some other inversions you can try are legs into the wall and shoulder stand, which I demoed in the sixth chakra video if you want to check that out. Okay, so right now we're going to come down into a forward fold. Inhale, coming halfway up. Exhale, we'll step the feet back. Inhale, lean forward, exhale, chaturanga. Let's bring it all the way down, bring the tops of the feet to the mat. Inhale, coming up into cobra. Exhaling, let's bring it into child's pose for just a couple of breaths. And then we'll inhale, coming up to seated. We'll swing the legs around, bring the soles of the feet to the mat. Scooch up. And then we'll take our time using the core, slowly with control, coming down to the mat, bringing the back of the head to the mat. We'll draw the heels in towards the hips. And let's come into our bridge pose, spreading the fingers nice and wide, inhaling, lifting the hips. You can bring a block under the lower back if that feels good. Maybe lift the hips a little higher. Maybe clasp the hands underneath the body, rotating the inner arms towards the ceiling, pinning the shoulders to the mat, really using the thighs to lift the hips. And exhale, releasing the hands. Inhale, lifting the knees. Exhale, hugging the knees towards the chest, maybe gently rocking the hips from side to side. And I'm going to demo wheel pose. If you'd like to try it, feel free. If not, you can work on bridge pose. That's a good um, alternative. So we'll bring the hands for wheel pose. We'll bring the hands on either side of the ears. And the fingertips are pointing towards the shoulders. Fingers are spread nice and wide. Elbows pointing up towards the ceiling. Um, make sure that you're feeling a good connection between the feet and the mat. And then on the inhale, we're going to press up through the hips and bring the crown of the head to the mat, engaging the shoulders so we don't place too much pressure on the neck. Okay? And then from there, you'll straighten the arms, straighten the legs, maybe walk the feet in a little bit closer. Maybe lift through the hips. And then we'll carefully bend the elbows, bring the back of the head to the mat first, and then gently roll the spine down. 
hug the knees into the chest, rocking from side to side. Let's bring the soles of the feet to the mat. Let the soles of the feet touch and open the knees out. Coming into reclined butterfly pose. Start to bring your awareness to that soft spot or where it would have been on the crown of your head. Visualizing a swirling violet clear light. Glowing brighter with every inhale, sort of like a halo glowing around your head. You can stay here in reclined butterfly or you can stretch the heels out into Shavasana, bring the arms away from the body. With every inhale, bringing that Violet light out a little bit further, expanding it out a little bit further into the universe. On the next inhale, feeling that violet light fill up your whole head, all around the brain, the eyes, the nose, the mouth. Behind the eyes. Inhale a little more deeply, bring it into the throat. On the next inhale, pulling that light into the chest, the heart, the arms, the fingertips. On the exhale, feeling it expand out into the universe. On the next inhale, feeling that light come down the spine all the way to the tailbone into the solar plexus and the abdomen. Inhaling, bringing that violet light into the hips, the buttocks, the pelvis. Inhaling, bringing that light into the thighs, the kneecaps, the backs of the knees. On the next inhale, pulling that violet light all the way from the crown of the head into the calves and the shins. And now on the spinal breath, we're going to bring that light all the way through the ankles, the, the soles of the feet, the tips of the toes. And on the exhale, feel this light expanding out of every cell of the body, out into the universe. Picture it growing brighter with every breath, growing bigger with every breath. Feel the light rising about a foot away from your body. Inhale, gather up more energy on the exhale. Feel that light expand to about three feet away from your body. Another good inhale, gathering up more prana, more fresh energy. On the exhale, feel that light expand out into the entire room. Inhale, drawing in more energy on the exhale, feeling that light expand beyond your house. And now feel it expanding beyond your neighborhood. And 
embracing their entire city. Becoming one with that cosmic wave. Another good inhale. And when you're ready, you can bring the arms overhead, point the toes, take a nice long body stretch. Another good inhale, and on the exhale, you can make your way onto the right side of the body, resting for a moment in the fetal position. Then taking your top hand, pressing it into the floor in front of you, and gently, carefully, slowly pressing yourself up into a comfortable seated position. Inhale, bring the arms up overhead. Exhale, bring the hands to heart center. May you ride the cosmic wave. Namaste. Thank you.